Lift up your hands. Thank you, God. Come on, begin to say something to God. Lift up your voice and begin to bless the name of God. Come on. Come on, lift up your voices. We can do better than we are doing. Yes. I want to hear resounding. Lift up your voice. God has been good to us. God has been good to us. He's been gracious enough. Come on, lift up your voice. Throughout the whole week, it has not been by might. It has been by the spirit of the living God. Father, we came to bless you. We came to give you all the praise. To glorify your holy name. To thank you for this privilege. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. I want you to reach out to three, four, five people and tell them it's lovely seeing you. I want you to tell them it is great seeing you. Come on, talk to three, four, five people. Kingdom channel pass away, oh ancient of the earth. Oh ancient of the earth. Your kingdom shall reign all over the earth. Sing to the ancient of the earth. And none can compare to your majesty. Sing to the ancient of the seated but if there's a, a space in front of you I, I've already told you we are people with an excellent spirit we are not mediocre people we are not mediocre people we refuse to accept things to be the way they are move forward hallelujah if there's a space in front of you just move forward amen tell somebody kingdom 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 I don't like what you are doing Last week it was kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Amen. How many of us are proud to be in God's kingdom? Hallelujah. Amen. It is such an amazing experience to be a child of God. Amen. It is an amazing experience to be a child of God. You are not like any other person. You're not bereft of ideas and the help from on high. No way. You're a child bought by the blood. Hallelujah. Of the only begotten son of Jesus. Am I preaching to somebody? That is why you cannot take yourself for granted. Amen. Uh, one, many years ago, we used to say when I gave my life to Jesus. But that life of yours, you couldn't give it to Jesus. He found you anyway. Hallelujah. He did what? He found you. Amen. Left with what you were doing and what you love to do, giving that life to Jesus wouldn't have been uh, one of your options. But he found us anyway. Amen. And then he brought us by his grace into his kingdom to be partakers of what the kingdom is all about. 
Hallelujah. It is our responsibility as, as people of the kingdom to behave like people of the kingdom. There are three principal things that defines a kingdom. Number one, if you're right and right, the first thing that defines a kingdom is your dominion or domain, your territory, defined territory. So the Republic of Ghana has a defined territory. The United Kingdom is a collection of islands. They don't want us to know they are, they are, uh, they are an island, but this is a, a very big island. Amen. They have a defined dominion where within certain coordinates you can find the United Kingdom situated. Hallelujah. So we are talking about kingdom, people, people who belong to the kingdom. And we are talking about what defines the kingdom. The first thing is the domain, domain, define measurements of where you can find the kingdom. Amen. The second thing you need to understand when it comes to defining a kingdom is the foundation or the principles by which the kingdom functions. In modern terminology, you might talk about the executive power, the judiciary, and the legislature. Principles by which we govern the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, in the book 1984 by George Orwell, uh, uh, in it, he prophetically predicts what will happen in the future regarding governance and the people where the media would have to repeat. Have you ever asked yourself why Sky News can repeat one news heading for over eight hours or six times? Because psychologists are proven that whatever you expose to six times sticks. Amen? So you find out there's a difference between the liberal news outlet and the conservative. Each has an agenda to tweak you to fit into their perspective. And so George Orwell was talking about the fact that in the future, government, governments would take charge of even the language we speak. Hallelujah. And now we are being brainwashed and with legal, legalities to accept certain lifestyles ordinarily you wouldn't accept. Because, you see, I, I was having a word with someone who said, oh, but you Christians, I said, listen, the, the good, what is good is innate. It's not about Christianity. <laughs> Why does a thief run away immediately? They, they shout, hey, Juloi. Amen. Why does the thief run away? When somebody shouts, thief, thief. Why does he not stay? Because innately he knows stealing <laughs> Is not right. But he hasn't got what it takes to deal with why they keep being a klepto. Is somebody listening to me? So you, you have the domain, you have the, what was the second one? The foundation on which, and the third thing is the language of the kingdom. Language of the kingdom. Ordinarily, before the British came to Ghana, we didn't have one common language, so to say. Amen. Before the French went to Ivory Coast, they didn't speak French. But because their kingdom there, after they had defined the territories of Africa, the scramble for Africa, if you've ever read that book, a thick uh, book about how uh, painfully, even uh, two people, the Tutsis and Hus, uh, Hutsis, what started the Rwandan War was simply because of the scramble for Africa. One part of Tutsi were here, the, the other part was here. One part of Hutsis were here, the other part of Hutsis were here. Ordinarily, they belonged, the Hutsis were just one tribe. But the scramble for Africa then divided and separated people from each other. Hallelujah. So once they move over to Africa, 
they began to define the domains of the African countries. Amen. Then they introduced how their executives work, legislature work. If you look at Ghana's parliament, it is, a, it is the same as what the UK does. Am I preaching to somebody? Many years ago, the French president had a seat at the French parliament. They could just fly over if they had a parliament, parliamentary meeting. He was a, they call it the policy of assimilation. So French people were, uh, French Africa was part of French Europe. And their presidents had a seat at the parliament of French Europe. We're still talking about the kingdom. We're talking about domain. We're talking about foundation. And we are talking about uh, the language. So they came over and imposed their single language on us. Because by them imposing their single language on us, they now could control who we are. And possibly help many of us betray our identity. The reason why many of us from English Africa come directly to, to Britain is because they came directly to where? Africa. They showed us the good things that happened in English, Brit English Britain. So any time I pick my passport, my target has never been America. It has been exactly where my foundation, the principles, the domain, and the language came from. Am I preaching to somebody? Connect the same thing to the kingdom which we belong. As believers. Domain. Foundation. The language. Domain, foundation, the language. As Christians. As Christians. If we are going to function in this kingdom, thrive in this kingdom, do more for God because Jesus said, uh, I go to my father. How can we work the works of the father? He said, I go to my father. If he's therefore going back to his father, it means that whatever he did, we can do twice that. His presence stopped you and I from doing exactly what he was doing. But now that he goes to his father, he has given you and I the authority. Tell somebody, kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. kingdom. He, uh, tell another person, kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. It's all about the kingdom of God. It's all about the kingdom. Like I said the last week, Jesus will go, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was talking about the domain, the foundation, and the language that he experienced in heaven. Amen. The whole essence of Jesus' revelation was to bring exactly what happens in heaven on earth. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom. He said after that, he said, thy will be done on where? On earth. Establish your kingdom on earth. We who have believed in him, he said as many as believed in him, he gave them the power, the power to become the children of God. Meaning that whatever God experiences in heaven, you and I can experience it. Receive health in the name of Jesus. Receive the healing in the name of Jesus. Receive the breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Be like God in the name of Jesus. Kingdom. Tell somebody kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. So our focus is to understand the foundation on which our Christian faith is based. It is not based on the newest car that you drive. Those are byproducts. It is not based on the new house that you want to buy. Those are byproducts. It is based, this kingdom is based on the word of God. Hello? Based on the word of God. Who uphold all things by the power of his word. 
Everything in existence has been held by the power of God. Let's switch it. Adam was created on earth. Watch this. From the dust of the earth. But when, when God finished that, it's like, okay, we finished creating Adam. Now the writer says that he created, built a garden eastward of Eden. Then he picked up him from the earth and placed him in the garden. Watch this. Created Adam on earth from the dust of the earth. Created a garden eastward of Eden. Then picked Adam and positioned Adam in Eden. Then he said, everything here is yours except that. And the day you eat of that which I have commanded you not to, you will go back to the earth. The reason why I created you on, and, 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 and the earth, but yet picked you from the earth and placed you in the Garden of Eden is because you don't have what it takes to thrive on earth. And so I'm lifting you from where you are, taking you to the place where you can thrive. And that is to thrive in the abundance and in the creation and in the order and in the knowledge of God which he has freely given. And so the writer says that it wasn't man who was chasing after God. Check your Bible. It was God who are the cool of the day. Ah, may you experience that relationship in the name of Jesus. It was God. It was God chasing after his own creation. Wondering, Adam, where are you? What's up? How's it going? Is everything okay? How are you thriving? He said, everything is in order. The day man ate of the fruit, man went back to where he was created from. But didn't go just like that. God said, you've missed the dominion. You've destroyed the foundation. You've lost the language. Adam, you can't belong here anymore. Nobody having these, not having these three can thrive in the Garden of Eden. So guess what? I'm going to take you from the garden, send you back to where you came from. Somebody shout Yehoah. Oh, shout Yehoah. From the Garden of Eden, where the domain was intact, the language was intact, the foundation was all right. Based on these three principles, every nation that insists. So if you want the British passport, they tell you life in the UK what? Skills. Okay, most of you, you came from Kokoasu, so you don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Papa, they will not allow you to speak any other language in this country except the English. You dare not defy the principles. The foundation of this nation. You cannot thrive here. Am I preaching to somebody? Adam lost it. From that time, God tried to win man, tried several media by which he could win man, but he lost. He, uh, not that he lost, but man wasn't willing to be brought back. And so in Genesis chapter 6, God said, my spirit will not strive with that of man. All his days are evil. Listen to the language. All his days are evil. He will live 120 years. The 120 was a typology of Jesus in Revelation. Hello? Tell somebody kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Tell somebody I'm a kingdom builder. I tell you, I tell you. Until your heartbeat is about the kingdom of God, the heartbeat of God will never be about you. Until your focus is about the kingdom and how healthy the kingdom can ever be, the heartbeat of God can never be. The day you switch from my problems, my problems, my problems to the kingdom and its survival, you will see God walking without you sweating. I'm being honest. Too many of us are too focused. How much, how much, uh, 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 if you work, how much do they give you an hour? Don't, not that we want to know how much you earn. So, yeah. Is that all you're worth, hypothetically speaking? That you would exchange the power of the kingdom for that? It's just not true that you'd have to work on Sundays. Except you're a nurse. As for nurses, be careful. They will inject you right now. 
Except, no, 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 true. Too many of us are running after things that won't be a blessing eventually. I am blessed in my life all by church. All by church. All by church. All by church. And I'm going to be blessed in my life all by church. Kingdom. Kingdom. Kingdom agenda. Kingdom principles. I married and the church blessed me. Do you know how much money the church gave me? Not that they took from their coffers or before you start calculating. Individuals in the church, by the time we finished wedding, it was 10,000 pounds. Ten solid what? Thousands. People hundreds. By the time I finished my wedding, ten thousand pounds from individuals, not from outside, in the same church. Here. Kingdom. Tell somebody kingdom. Oh, tell another person kingdom. <laughs> the best of God for us is in this kingdom. It is not outside. It is all right for you to work because God is against lazy people. But he wants you to, in your working, inculcate principle, kingdom principle, kingdom focus, kingdom agenda. And until we get to that place, it becomes difficult. May the Lord have mercy on us. I said, may the Lord have mercy on us. So, in understanding the foundation of our Christian walk, the language of our Christian walk, and the principles thereof, then we need to also understand that you are not in this kingdom to be a loser. Hello? To lose out. No. The issues of life have no capacity. They don't have the audacity. They don't have the ability to stop you from functioning fully. The only time the issues of life will have the ability to stop you is when you don't apply kingdom principles. Hello? Tell somebody kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. Tell somebody. It's all about the kingdom. I'm telling you. Until you make the kingdom of God. And especially this church. Your focus. You won't see much as God wants you to see. Your strength is limited. If I should ask you what is your vision. If you should list your vision. And we put it in monetary terms. Even if they sell you. And sell your wife. And sell all your children. You know of a truth. That you don't have the financial wherewithal. To fulfill that vision. But do you know the truth? Unto him who is able to do. Exceed, can you measure exceeding? Exceeding. Abundantly. Far above. There is watertight. There's no space around it. You cannot put a measurement on what it means to be exceeding abundantly far above unto him. So how you will fulfill the vision will not be based on how much you earn or your educational accolades. For Mephibosheth had given up and he was caught up in Lodibar when the word of the king and Ecclesiastes says that when the word of the king is there's power. It takes the word from this kingdom to transgenerate a generation. I see your speed that in the name of Jesus. When you receive the word from the kingdom, your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Kingdom. 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 I look at my daughter and her, what she does. She's into art. She loves art. But I said, you, I know one day you'll be an architect. But when you finish studying, Kingdom. Am I preaching to somebody? I want all of them to be preachers. I don't know what you want your people. I want all my children to be preachers. It isn't because I'm a preacher, but it's because I'm a preacher. Am I helping somebody? Tell somebody kingdom. Now let's look at why in this kingdom you are special. Hallelujah. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God created you and I in his what? Image. An image is a near representation of the actual object in question. And so Psalm 86 says that ye are gods, ye are gods, small g, because you are created in the image of the big G. If I am a god, then I can do what my near representation allows me to do. <laughs> Hello? 
See, you're looking at your current situation and, and hey, but the council give me a house. You are God. You own that house. Just get ready and say, this is what I want. And God, as long as you are, you are my God, I want this property, so give it to me. I would wait on you. I am not in a rush. Wait patiently on the Lord. And he inclined his ear to my prayer. Then when the Lord inclined his ear to my prayer, he put a new song, song of victory. Waiting on God might be tough, but eventually, waiting on God pays with victory. I say you're winning in the name of Jesus. Kingdom minded, you're winning in the name of Jesus. Kingdom created in the image of God. Your facial expression, your body, how it's been contoured. It is a, it's because of your parents. So you have similarities of that of your parents. But what makes you who you are is the image of God. Am I preaching to somebody? Kingdom, tell somebody kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. I want you to understand your place in this kingdom and that you're not something like a byproduct uh, uh, someone who gave his life to Jesus and everything is not working and you're wondering if giving your life to Jesus is true. You're not a byproduct. You're a child of this kingdom. Hello? Tell somebody kingdom. Again? Again? Abba. 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 Don't settle for anything beneath kingdom. Amen. If you're not married, don't, don't choose any joker. Who does not belong to the kingdom? I was talking to some, well, well, it is not by force that we all, I'm a Christian, but it's not by force that we have to marry Christians. I said, you are, you are doomed for eternal pain. One man said, one lady said, that if you marry a Christian, uh, uh, a Christian, at least when he's insulting you, he will use the Bible. You brood of vipers. At least it is in the Bible. <laughs> Am I preaching to somebody? Hey, don't make that mistake. Don't make, wait on God. Find somebody who loves God. It's loves God like you love God. The first sign of peace in any marriage is the, uh, the unity of faith. Your wife is a Buddhist. You're a Christian. <laughs> and you're telling me it will work. No, 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 it won't work. Amen. Am I preaching? So I really admire men who every Sunday, men don't like coming to church. Men are the most jealous beings ever. Every man sees his mate and he's already measured. Oh, uh, so he's a pastor. Uh, what does he think he knows? I, I understand. Men are the most jealous beings ever. Men are the most competitive individuals ever. But if a man can uh, do away with all these things, come and sit in the house of God, drags his family along that let us go and feed from the word of God, I admire those men. Tell somebody kingdom. kingdom. Tell another person kingdom. kingdom. Tell them it is about the kingdom. John chapter 15 verse 15 after Jesus had walked a little bit with his disciples, he said watch this, I no longer call you slaves. I call you friends. <laughs> I no longer call you slaves. I call you friends. Friends. You are my brothers. You are my sisters in this kingdom. Slaves don't have the same access as the children of the kingdom. Slaves are subjugated to eternal uh, servitude. But you see, I have switched you over from slavery into friendship. If you are my friend and working for the kingdom, then I can tell you things about the kingdom. Am I speaking to somebody? At some point, Jesus said, Father, I thank you that this, these truths have been hidden from the prudent and the wise and have been revealed unto babes. He was talking to you and I. So the revelation you can receive in a given situation will be 10 times better than somebody who isn't in this kingdom. Am I preaching to somebody? Am I preaching to somebody? We are no longer slaves. Stop acting like a slave when a little challenge and hey, slaves wonder how the next meal will come. Slaves wonder how the uh, situation will be solved. Slaves wonder when their master will move. But friends of the kingdom, now Paul then elevates it from friendship. He said, you are joint heirs. We are joint heirs. The apostle Paul, 
by revelation he said we are joined heirs now Jesus said I'll switch you from slavery into friendship he said and he, he, he rose again went away the anointing came upon the apostle Paul by revelation it says in Romans chapter 8 verse 17 you are, you are joined heirs so wherever Christ sits I sit hello <laughs> that is why you cannot accept this is the end of your life no whatever Jesus enjoys from his father you and I can also do what oh Jesus you and I can also do what no enjoy enjoy some people ah, enjoy Am I preaching to somebody? Am I helping somebody? We are joined us. Jesus said, I won't call you slaves. Slavery demeans and devalues the essence of my father who created you in his image. If I am here, called you from all walks of life, brought you into this kingdom, then I can no longer call you slave. I call you friends. And the apostle Paul then looks at it and said, no, no, no. We are better than friends. We are joined as. Tell somebody kingdom. I want you to understand your place in the kingdom before we move on to how you can help build this kingdom. Amen. Join us. Jesus is the prince of peace. It means that you, you have peace. Am I preaching to somebody? It's a blessing, Anna. Go every blessing that God bestowed on Christ Jesus. If Jesus is a joint, I am. If I am a joint heir with Jesus, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've got to have my level. Tell somebody I've got to have mine. Tell another person I've got to have mine. Am I preaching to somebody? Many of the challenges we face is because we don't fully speak the language of the kingdom I'm not saying go around quoting scriptures they say how much would you uh, uh, Sainsbury they say money he said oh silver and gold are mine they will slap you that's not what I mean lift the scriptures tell somebody lift the scriptures oh tell somebody lift the scriptures so don't go around telling oh, oh pastor says uh, we speak the kingdom language for not by might not by power but by the spirit of God they would ask you do you want to pay or do you want us to call the police? He said, as for these groceries, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. They would have to call me to bail you out. We are talking about you living the kingdom. Am I speaking to somebody? Tell somebody I'm a joint heir with Christ in this kingdom. Hallelujah. Kindly give a clap offering unto God. Hallelujah. Number two, number four. Paul then also elevates it. He says in Ephesians chapter two that we are seated in heavenly places. Woo. Don't forget Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then the apostle Paul is saying that no matter where I am, no matter the situation, no matter the challenge, I am seated right. Tell somebody I am seated right. Again, I am seated right. I am seated in heavenly places. You see, before the blood was shed, the enemy could go to any meeting God holds with his children. Now, in the book of Daniel, when the blood was used to sanctify the altar, which represents the heavenly altar, Satan no longer goes to heaven to... Uh, challenge God. Have you seen your servant at least? He said, Yehoah, don't go there. Hallelujah. No, he can no longer do that. But the only way he does is he, he has the power of deception. Amen. And anytime a person is deceived, definitely you're going to fall into sin. And then the Bible also says that he's the accuser of the brethren. You cannot be accused if there's not a cause. Am I speaking to somebody? So anytime the enemy wants to stop a blessing from manifesting, 
the first thing he would do is to deceive then when he is deceived he would have the legal rights to accuse we are seated in heavenly places hey young woman you can't just throw your body anywhere oh. hallelujah no no young man you can't you're, you're too much you too much amen Jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh. listen to good songs it has you who said you are going to die excess love uh, we are too much for us to underestimate our value money cannot buy your value am I preaching to somebody seated in heavenly places seated not that you're begging to be seated you're already in position you have to insist on that position which God has placed you take take take, take that which is yours you see I'll be 42 this year one of the things I no longer tolerate is mediocrity and nonsensical people who kind of pass that hey, take my friend get lost because I have eight years to be 50 immediately you are 50 my friend I, I was telling someone that look if by 30 you don't know where you are in life 40 you wouldn't know 50 you wouldn't know 60 give up eh? give up give up am I preaching to somebody seated in heavenly places I want my mind focused my mind everything about me focus the rest of my life is all about building churches and, and going around and planting churches and all that you think I've got time to and, and mediocre statement no no speak the language of the kingdom tell somebody remember, remember. your language remember. is that of the kingdom hey hey failure 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 will pursue you wherever you go. But chase failure back with excellence. For Daniel in whom was found an excellent spirit in the whole kingdom. In the whole kingdom of Babylon. They said Daniel had an excellent. May it be your story in the name of Jesus. I said may it be your story in the name of Jesus. Now the spirit of God is speaking to me about one of us who has adopted. It's like you've adopted a child you take care of you've adopted not that they live with you but it's like and it's a girl you've adopted a girl that you take care of that you take care of I want to once I'm done I want to pray for that individual you've adopted a girl you've adopted a girl that you literally are responsible for for their well-being from schooling and everything thank you Holy Spirit I, when we finish, I want to pray for that person. Tell somebody kingdom. kingdom. Tell somebody kingdom. kingdom. Now I'm seeing something in the spirit about somebody's left ear where every now and then the ear itches abnormally. It itches abnormally. You, 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 you've been trying to, it itches abnormally. I would have to deal with that itching in the name of Jesus. Am I speaking to somebody? I am seeing an organ, somebody's organ. You, somewhere last year, somewhere last year, somewhere in the month of August, September, October, you went to your doctors and you were told something to do with one of your organs has increased in size. Increase in size. August, September, October. They told you something to do with one of your organs has increased in size. Let me finish my preaching and let's deal with those things. Amen? Amen. Kingdom. 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 Tell somebody it's about the kingdom. Tell another person it's about the kingdom. Tell them kingdom. Seated in heavenly places. Say that. I want you to think about that. Seated in heavenly places. You see, the idea that the, the writer said, heaven, uh, there are go streets of gold, and uh, it is an, it's, a, it's somewhat a near description of how heaven is as beautiful. Amen. So you want to go and walk on streets of gold. The way I look at some of you, you don't even type. You don't offer streets of gold. Mm. 
Every step you take, you scrape some. Even in heaven, you want to go and scrape some gold. Hallelujah. Am I helping someone? Hey, your kingdom, is, your, your place in this kingdom is beyond your understanding. It's beyond your revelation. It's beyond. So every little trouble, you forget that, hey, I'm a kingdom child. I'm a kingdom child. I will be a hedge of fire around you in the kingdom. I have inscribed you in the palms of my hands in the kingdom. You are every, if anybody touches you, he touches the apple of my eye. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. It is the kingdom. I am God who make it known what is sure. The surety about this life is in the kingdom. And it's not for those outside. You are 10 times better. I said you are 10 times better. You are 10 times better in the name of Jesus. Kingdom. If anybody tells you, you will lose. Tell them, hey, I belong to the kingdom. In that kingdom, we go through challenges, but there are no losers. Hello? In that kingdom, we go through challenges, but there are no losers. Because the challenges that God allows into our lives is to teach us lessons. It's to strengthen us for the next step. For the next step. So David in Psalm 23 said, yet though I go through the valley, it wasn't God who sent him in there. It wasn't God. Check your scriptures. He said, yeah, though, because initially he had been talking about the things God would do. He make it, he restore it, he lead it. Uh, then, then he comes to the point where he decides to take charge. Yeah, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no. Do you know what that means? Even when I sin, you can forgive me. Even when I've made a mistake, you can give me an opportunity for a retake. Am I preaching to somebody? Even if I didn't stop right, you can help me do it right. Wave and let me know you're being blessed. Tell somebody kingdom. kingdom. Tell another person kingdom. kingdom. So in this kingdom, it is not an accident that you're in here. Amen. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I want you to read. Everyone open your Bibles. Check on your phone, you modernistas. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Kingdom. Kingdom. Mom. Mom. But when you say, Edomu Pupa Ufie, I know what it means. Emmaso. Emmaso. I've seen a lot of people come to your home. To your home. And if you're holding on to your heart, it won't happen. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Okay, in your Bibles, whichever language, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Ready? Kindly get your Bibles. We are going to read in unison. I want you to read it carefully, carefully. Papa, I want you to read those scriptures carefully. Hallelujah. I want you to read it carefully. If you're ready, say we are ready. Are you ready? No, you say number ready. You didn't grow up in Ghana. You fall off. Hey, so now you're British, isn't it? Hey, hey, we're British. Eh? First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. What is it saying? But we are what? Do you know what that means? You're not a chosen individual. God is talking about transgeneration. But you and your family seated here, you are a chosen what? You are chosen what? You are chosen what? You are chosen what? I am a chosen generation. Tell yourself I am a chosen generation. Meaning, watch this, watch this. Peter said if God saves a person, he will save his entire family. Meaning that you are the light that lighted the path that cometh into the world. So in that family, in that family, in that family, because you are chosen generation, if you keep walking with kingdom foundation, kingdom dominion, kingdom language, you would impact transgeneration. You are a chosen what? Ah, tell somebody kingdom, 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 kingdom. Do it this way, kingdom. You, you know, in my sleep, I was doing this kingdom. I love, I love. You see, I am so proud that I'm a Christian. Amen. It would have been a big mistake if I'd not given this life of mine, if Jesus had not found me. I 
happy with this kingdom you are a royal a chosen what generation picked out delivered can the prey of the mighty and the strong one be delivered that saith the law the prey even the prey of the mighty and terrible one can be delivered you see so it does not matter where they take you you're already delivered you are a chosen what generation a chosen what a chosen what say I am a chosen generation in this kingdom say I am do this I am a chosen generation in God's kingdom I am a chosen generation in God's kingdom Abba. Uh huh. what does he say again forever my life is at the altar my life is an incense unto God. Everything I do is an good, a sweet smelling scent unto God. A royal priesthood. Not that it doesn't mean that all your children are going to be pastors like mine. No. It means that forever I am sacrificed on the altar of God. So whatever I do brings a smile. To God. I don't disgrace God. Am I preaching to somebody? My lifestyle is according to the principles of the word of God. Hello? Hello? If someone is sleeping, I give you permission. Speak tongues unto them. Am I preaching to somebody? A royal priesthood. So, that, that can the enemy destroy your family? Royal priesthood. Abba. Royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. A chosen generation. Royal priesthood. Kingdom. It is because of this kingdom that you belong to that these titles and these gifts and these positions are freely yours. You are failure. No, 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 my friend. No, 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 no. I, I went through a glitch, but I can't fail. Amen. Amen. One man said, I am not falling. I'm always rising. I'm always rising. I'm always rising. There are some of us here, you can't even believe that God can bless you with a hundred thousand. I can believe God can give me a hundred million. I'm telling you. I've gone past that. I can believe that God can give me a hundred million. Am I preaching to somebody? We have to, I was telling my wife that the new vision God has given, I want to build about 2,000 homes and give it for free. To people in Ghana. Hello? I'm telling you. I'm believing God that a few, I was, I was describing a vision to Uncle that in, in many, in a, in a few years to come, we will build affordable homes here in London, this church. And our members, we give it to them. Hey, how much rent are you paying? So, oh, Pastor, I'm hey, the landlord. Hey, hey, Gupti, this is not Gupti. This is Rajiv has been charging me. So, how much do you pay? Hey, Pastor, the, how much do you pay? I said, Pastor, I pay 1,800. I said, no, pay 800 pounds. Go and live in that house, you and your family, and serve God. Tell somebody it is kingdom. Abba, royal priesthood, a chosen generation, what does it say? Unholy what? That is why, you see, one of the dangers of serving God and sinning is that you delay the best of God for your life. Amen. You delay the best of God. You actually delay. It isn't because God has, hasn't got any good plans concerning your life. He has. But you actually delay. But the thing that stops God from functioning fully in the life of believers is sin. A holy nation. Wherever I go, they should see. I'm a child of God. I can't talk what they are talking. Am I preaching to somebody? I cannot do what they do. But I, I've got to stand up. Stand up. If they are working two hours, I have to work more to prove to them. In this kingdom, we are not in to uh, take things for free from God. Am I preaching to somebody? Got to make sure. Work things out. A holy nation. Uh-huh. 
A what? A what? A what? Earlier on, they used to call Christianity the way, the way, the way. Then in Antioch, what the way people were doing to the way, they said, no, these guys, we can't call them the way. They've been with Christ. They are unique. Idiosyncrasy, differently. They are, they are, they are uh, uh, peculiar. You can't define them. Amen. So Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 2, the wind bloweth where it listeth. The, you're peculiar. And you know what it not. He said, so is a person born of the spirit. Peculiar. Just when they think they've gotten you here, the wind comes to blow you into a different place. They can't define you. you, you Mom will say, you are hundios. Eh? You are hundios. They can't define your hundiosity. Eh? Put that in a redemption house dictionary. Hundiosity. By the time you say that, you should have eaten a lot of herba and fufu. Hundiosity. <laughs> huh? People, people, we are in the right place. Let your joy be that you will appear before God when he requires. <laughs> Let it be. Let it be. Let it be your joy. Let it also be your joy that if you have all these privileges in the kingdom, you've seen somebody suffering, invite them, bring them into the kingdom. Am I preaching to somebody? Reach out to the next person and tell them, hey, I belong to a kingdom where I am hudios, peculiar, chosen generation. What? Holy nation, peculiar, different, not like everyone. They thought you were broke. No, God was the one breaking you so he would build you. So in a few years time, you rise with the wings of the eagle and you soar higher and higher and higher and higher. They can't define the beginning and the end. I prophesy that on somebody in the name of Jesus. I see you rise in the name of Jesus. Nothing will bring you down. You are rising in Jesus' name. You are rising in the name of Jesus. There will be a significant, watch this, a significant change in your life in the name of Jesus. South Kingdom. Abba, shout kingdom. Am I helping somebody? You cannot die because of a medical challenge. In this kingdom, it is God who determines when we die. Psalm 91, verse 16. Before we come to 2 Peter, Psalm 91, don't, don't put it there. Don't, don't put it on that. I said, I will satisfy you with long life. Repeat after me, God. Your word says that in this kingdom, you satisfy us with long life. Therefore, any plan, any entrapment of the enemy concerning my life and that of my children, that of my husband, in this family, in the name of Jesus, by virtue of this word, I come against it. In Jesus' mighty name. Tell somebody it's about the kingdom. Uh huh. Finally, Second Peter, First uh, uh, Peter, chapter two, verse nine. What does it say? What we're reading? The peculiar people, and what does that say? That we should do what? Uh huh. The praises of Him who called us into this marvelous one, out of darkness into this marvelous Abba. Oh, come on, in a few minutes, just lift up your hands and begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank Him. Abba. Abba. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Let's begin to thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Come on, lift up your voice and let's thank God. 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 I want to hear you lift your voice up. Lift your voice up. Lift your voice up. Lift up your voice and let's thank God. That we are members of this kingdom. We belong to this kingdom. We belong to this kingdom. We belong to this kingdom. 
Come on, lift up your voice. They say, Father, thank you for this opportunity and this privilege that I belong to this kingdom. I belong to this kingdom. I am in this kingdom. I belong to this kingdom. Jesus. ready now I came to make you aware of the fact that you belong to this kingdom if you belong to this kingdom lift up your voice diseases cannot uh, permeate your body it cannot ravage your body come on come on lift up your voice 
Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voices. We are where we are because of the kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of God.